This is Jordan Tower with JT News. Make sure you smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. Let's get right into the news, all right? So uh, Quavo, well, let's start with Quavo first. So Quavo has the dumbest flex of the day. Let's just let's just keep it real. He says he pays his assistant $5,000 a day. $5,000 a day what, to hold a fan in front of his face and uh, hold an umbrella. And he says uh, he's a millionaire. You know, it's like, dude, if you're paying, <laughs> if you're paying your assistant five thousand dollars a day, there's one thing that's guaranteed: you're gonna run out of money. Okay, if you're spending money like that, it's not just that you're probably spending money like that all across the board. This is probably the dumbest flex I've seen in a while. Okay, <laughs> uh, then we got Rihanna. She's not done with her money. She is a billionaire now. Okay, she's officially a billionaire. Uh. Let's see, a bulk of Rihanna's net stems from 50% ownership stake in Fenty Beauty, uh, $1.4 billion. So that boosts her up. Uh, and then, let's see, explains that Fenty Beauty is currently worth $2.8 billion. <laughs> and those, they say, no signs of slowing down. Uh, lingerie company is $270 million, uh, which she owns, Forbes reports she owns 30% stake. And then uh, a connection, Jay-Z, Marcy Venture Partners Investment Firm also holds shares in the company. Um, Rihanna Fenty Beauty was able to gain... Jeez. So she she uh, she's taken on Kylie Jenner Cosmetics and Kim Kardashian Cosmetics. And Rihanna, th this is where it's at. Like, people, I've seen this over the past couple of years, like... People like uh, Jeffree Star and everybody getting into makeup. It's just so much money in makeup. I mean, look at look at most of her company is makeup billions. That's crazy. Um, so, geez, Rihanna is uh, doing her thing, man. And you don't even see her that much. That's what's crazy. Like she just low key does her thing. She's a billionaire. Then we got Young Miami. I guess Diddy's her sugar daddy now. Okay, there, there's 25 years difference between them. She's 27. Diddy's 52, or about to be 52. Uh, Diddy just will, will never. This just shows you Diddy never wants to get married and never wants to be committed. He wants to date younger girls, but never get married or anything because you know they're not thinking about marriage or anything. So it's like <laughs> he just doesn't. He doesn't seriously want to be with anybody uh this is weird though i mean he's definitely a sugar daddy let's be honest okay <laughs> he's her sugar daddy <laughs> kodak black might she might be creeping off to see kodak black in the middle of the night okay she needs a side guy with diddy uh then we got royce the five nine okay putting back together slaughterhouse he says Two or three down, one to go. So I guess they're, he's trying to get Joe Budden to get back down with the group. Uh, you know, he's it's it's kind of like, listen, I'm all for it. They're, they're a great group, right? But is 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 it coming right after this? Lupe Lupe defeated him. Let's just be honest, because Lupe dropped like 20 records. Royce wasn't ready for that. Royce did more lives complaining about Mickey Fax and Lupe than getting in the booth and showing he could spar with them still. I think Royce the 5'9 might be lacking confidence right now, you know, because he is really nice, but he might be lacking confidence. That happens. All of us. There's moments in your life where you doubt yourself, you know, and he might be going through that right now. But he just has to get in the booth and, and spar, and he'll regain his confidence. I, that, that's just how I feel. I mean, we know he's super talented, but he's going up, up against somebody that's super talented. Um, Takashi, he wants a one-on-one -on -one with Little Dirk in the bathroom. Then, not what you think. He wants to. He wants to scrap it out like 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 jail or something. He says. <laughs> Whack one hundred says I'll set that up. <laughs> I got to see this interview. I haven't, I didn't know where it was. I guess it's so, I guess academics really did do a deal with Spotify for his, um, for his podcast.
because it's exclusively on Spotify. I learned that today. It wasn't really advertised. Um, but I'm definitely going to watch this today. This will be my entertainment for the day. Yesterday was Versus. Today's this. Uh, at Versus, Styles P, there's other footage of Styles P trying to rip off Cameron's shoe and Cameron's kicking him off of him. And then you also got uh, Jim Jones actually fell off the stage. There's a clip of him falling off stage. He walked straight into the crowd. His glasses must have been too dark or something because he just he couldn't see and walked right off into the stage. You know, it showed if last night shows you anything, it shows you that when Dipset broke up, they never came back together and had that chemistry and brotherly love that they once had. The locks, even though they go through differences behind the scenes, they always keep that tight knit bond. The chemistry is always there. That's what it showed you last night. They were organized. They played off each other like they're they're still always in the studio together. They they understand each other still. Dipset, you can tell they're all doing their own thing. They come together once in a while, and they didn't even prepare for this event and get that chemistry going again. Uh, you saw them hanging out a few times, but obviously that wasn't enough. Um, and they didn't come to win. It was very sloppy on Dipset's part. Uh, very sloppy. And uh, also you could tell their crews don't really respect them. When you tell people to get off stage and they don't move, your crew doesn't respect you. You know, and that, that that's always a bad sign on both parts, actually. Nobody, nobody was getting off stage when they were supposed to. Uh, that showed a lot. It was a lot of little things that were there but you know Jadakiss took charge uh, you could tell the lock still um, let him lead the charge as an MC but you could tell in Dipset they weren't letting Cameron lead they all thought they were their own leaders and you need a leader even though Styles P still on the same level as Jadakiss you need someone to lead the charge and you're right there with them you know and that's how it used to be with Dipset Cameron used to lead the charge and then you had Jim Jones Jewels and everybody at his side, you know, but nobody was leading the charge at Dipset. It was just a free for all. The locks came in and they they tapped into all their features and everything, and they they knew when to pull those out. And uh, Dipset, it was just it just wasn't organized at all, bro. It was just weird because they had the records, but they just didn't. It's all about how you execute. And they didn't execute last night. They fumbled big time. It didn't even feel like with the locks, you got the that feeling of D-block again. You know, you got, they, they brought you back into that fold. Dipset, you didn't feel that at all, you know? You weren't like, yo, it, you didn't feel like you wanted to listen to some Dipset records after. You felt like you wanted to listen to a locks playlist. That's a big L on Dipset's part. I mean, Cameron got booed at the end. That's how bad it was. He got booed. Oh, man. Anyways, it was it was good. And you know what? They're both still iconic. And they're like, you know, we already know Dipset had, had the streets as far as, like, having people dress like them and everything. But the locks had the streets in a different way with the mixtapes, the lyrics, and... Uh, and they kept the streets. They kept that vibe. Dipset, they kind of lost out a little bit, man. But uh, I'm proud of, I'm proud of Deluxe, man. You know, like, you know, I worked with them a lot. And I was lucky to work with them a lot. Uh, back in, like, you know, 05, 06, 07, 08. You know, I was lucky around those times to do so many videos with them and everything. And be around them. Um, didn't appreciate, you know, like, at the time, you are just trying to get on. But uh, it was... Uh, you know, looking back, I was it was good to be able to work with them, you know, and do all those videos and everything. That was awesome. I worked with Dipset a lot too, but still Dipset was very separated by the time I was working with them. It wasn't tight knit. Um, you know, around 06, 07, they were already going their different ways. Slowly. Um yeah, man. Anyways, this is Jordan Tower with JT News. Make sure you smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. I appreciate you guys so much, and I hope you guys are having a great day today. Um, I will check you guys in the next one. It's Jordan Tower with JT News. Peace.